to you. Day three, we made it. Um, so my name is Jessica Maslin. I am the co-founder of Miron. And Miron, easy way to remember how to say it, is it's the combinations of the two words, mirror neurons. So our goal and premise, and I'll get into this, is to activate the mirror neurons, which are responsible for the execution of goal-related motor actions. And there's so many ways that VR is such a powerful tool for this. But going back to a very elementary example of what mirror neurons are is if you're watching a pitcher throw a baseball to a catcher over and over and over again, your eyes will eventually go to the catcher's mitt because your brain knows the outcome of the pattern. So using different patterns and using different techniques to really trick your brain into firing off new nerve pathways because your old ones may have been damaged due to injury, accident, or just because of different neurological disorders. So I'll give you a quick background. Um, originally, we've been working in VR for quite some years, doing different activations, like Black Friday's activation with Tilly's, uh, for major retailers, uh, different experiences for brands like Sperry, bringing you out into different oceanic experiences, music festivals for people that go to them and people that are at home, and also narrative experiences, which are really interesting. But as we were doing all these VR experiences, we realized Narrative is amazing and it's great and it's a powerful tool, but what can we do that's more impactful? And as we were going along with these narrative experiences, we did a really awesome experience with this artist named Greg Crayola Simpkins and got a lot of press. JJ Abrams team called our office asking how we did a certain type of movement in VR that we actually engineered our own hardware to be able to accomplish. And um, we had a lot of great success with it, but the most important thing that came out of it was being introduced to this little girl, Eden. And Eden is the niece of the artist, and she, uh, she suffered a spinal stroke doing a backbend in her living room just at five years old, like all five-year-old kids do, playing around with her sister, and became a paraplegic from the waist down. And she kept talking about the VR experience of her Uncle Greg, and kept talking about how when she was there with him painting this mural, and the colors that he chose. And when she was talking to her parents, they realized, wow, she believes that she was there. So like, she was on the other side of the country. And they just realized that there's a really powerful way that VR can trick you, and especially for younger brains, you know, being able to have a memory that's so much more realistic to you. And other people have talked about this throughout the conference. So we met Eden, my co-founder Josh and I, we flew out to Kentucky, where her family uprooted to to attend a specialized hospital and learned about what she's doing in rehab, what the desired outcomes are, and what the secondary outcomes are. And one of the first things that Eden's parents told us were, if life was just about Eden walking again, our lives would be so easy. There's so many things that you don't realize that go on with a spinal cord injury. So we started with spinal cord injuries. That was our main focus. How can we help all of these things that this little girl needs now to do for the rest of her life? Like simply being able to sit in a chair there's so many muscles that you don't realize that you're using when you're sitting, when you're reaching, when you're brushing your teeth, and back muscles, core muscles, things that all of us that are able-bodied in the room don't even have to work out to be able to use. Quickly, once Miron was being used by different healthcare providers, they informed us that they're using it for brain injuries, CP, Parkinson's, stroke, any type of musculoskeletal disorder that people are trying to improve their mobility Miron had a way that it could work for them. And not only that, but they were getting creative with how they used it. So we have a library that focuses on all levels of mobility. So if you can't even hold a controller because you don't have hand dexterity, you'll be able to participate in some of the experiences. But people are training it with PT and OT, and that's the premise of the library. We're based in these principles of physical therapy, occupational therapy, neurological engagement, and neuroplasticity. But when activity-based trainers and PTs are getting into their own practices and using Neuron as a tool, I think that's when the really most amazing things happen because they're incorporating other hardware that they use with VR. And we have some really amazing cases that I'll get into. So this is a snapshot of rehab candidates. And you know the range is huge. But if you look at the US, there's all of these people that could benefit from rehab and less than 9% of people actually participate in rehab or PT. There's a lot of reasons for that. Health insurance, mobility, transportation, having a work schedule that you can't take away from. And you know, when we talk about wheelchair users, 
the problems get even more difficult. Do you have transportation? Can you navigate your wheelchair in the snow? Do you have someone that can drive you? Does your insurance run out? Are there too many doctor's appointments that you can't just keep track of and that you're overwhelmed? You have a new normal to live with. And this might be someone that's newly injured. This might be someone that was injured and is now in a wheelchair for 20 years. They're still living the repercussions. So many rehab candidates want a physical therapy practice that's engaging, motivating, and really puts them back into wanting to achieve more because they get complacent with what they're able to do and don't realize that they can do more than what they think they can. So when Miron is involved, we find that people are telling us that their rehab is more motivating, they're more engaged, and I think the two really remarkable things are that people push themselves and work out or do their rehab with a higher intensity for a longer period of time. And if any of us go to the gym and we work out more and harder, we're gonna see more gains. But as soon as you stop, you also lose those gains. And that's something that's really serious for someone that is in a wheelchair because if you lose your gains, you might not be able to get yourself out of bed and into your wheelchair to start your day, which means you need a caregiver 24 seven, which means it's an even higher cost of living for you and a lower quality of life. So those are the things that we look to tackle. We want to improve people's mobility, which improves their independence and their quality of life. The other thing is that people sometimes have a lot of neuropathic pain when they're injured. And neuropathic pain does not go away. Opioids don't always help. When you have someone that has paralysis, the muscles around their digestive system are also paralyzed. So they're already at a high risk of sepsis. And then if you add opioids into the mix, it makes it even worse. So how can we combat pain and also make it fun? That's one of the elements of the Miron Library. So this gentleman right here, as you can see, he's in the wheelchair, but he's also doing a uh, pain exercise because while he's getting his NMES, you guys told me be, don't be crazy with the laser, but I might go crazy. Uh, so while he's doing NMES, he's also in a pain management exercise because he was having a bad day, he had a lot of neuropathic pain, he wasn't willing to work with his practitioners, and they needed something to really break him from that cycle. So when people are in BR, their pain perception can be reduced by up to 90%, and those effects last outside of the BR session. So a lot of practitioners, like in this guy's case, they'll start the day out with Miron, and then do other exercises also, incorporate another Miron experience from the library, and then do traditional practices. So it's a really versatile tool that you can use with other equipment. And like it says, when you're not in pain, what do you focus on? They can focus on the task at hand. They can focus on the experience that they're doing. They can beat their score. They can challenge someone else. So it really makes the gamified elements that make rehab, you know, usually not so fun, <laughs> makes it into more of a fun activity. Another case use we have here, which I really love, is the corn trunk stability. So that is one of the number one most important things that somebody that has been paralyzed needs to gain back. If you don't have trunk stability, you cannot get out of your wheelchair for yourself. You can't get out of bed in the morning. You can't brush your teeth. You can't brush your hair. You can't feed yourself. And all of these things are so necessary that a lot of us just take for granted. You wake up for morning and you might be tired and slugging to the bathroom, but you're not thinking, oh wow, like what if I couldn't even sit up? So here we have this really amazing woman, Amanda Boxtel. You'll see more of her later in the presentation. And in her session, you can just see her smile as Huge. This is the first time she ever tried Miron, and she was doing her rehab sessions, and she was in BR for about 45 minutes at this point. Every single time that her practitioner was like, okay, now we're gonna work on core, she's like, okay, but I wanna do it with Miron. Now we're gonna work on lateral reach, okay, but I wanna do it with Miron. And at the end of her session, when they told her, okay, like your appointment is up, she was like, no, that can't be, I've only been here for 15 minutes. And she completed her entire hour of rehab that day. So. You know, the time flies when you're having fun. It's really a true example. And she told us that after that session, she was feeling sore in areas that she really, she didn't think she had sensation in anymore because she activated muscle groups that she really hasn't been touching upon so much. This guy right here is another great example. Um, and you know, you can also see they gave us permission to use this because they want to see what real life is. That he has a catheter. So again, bowel movement is extremely, limited and also really taking away that control from you when you've been paralyzed. So he's working on core and trunk stability exercises for the reasons I mentioned, being having that independence, but also in hopes of regaining partial bowel control, which again is a huge thing because you don't want to be the person that's 
can't control it, and it's embarrassing for a lot of people. Like Eden, when we first started with her, she does these crawling, uh, assisted crawling exercises where someone holds her hips and she's supposed to crawl across the floor and really activate her core so that she can end up pulling her legs, even though her leg muscles are not always activated in that response. It's a painful experience for her and she's also really embarrassed because she's a six-year-old wearing a diaper and she hates it. She doesn't want people to see the diaper. And her parents have talked with diaper companies about making diapers that look like underwear for kids her age, but it's not a huge market. So it's just something that she has to deal with. So she's usually not really willing to participate in that exercise. But when she had Miron on, she was swatting at things and really, really, really engaged, laughing, making it her own game. And while we were watching, we're like, okay, she likes it. She likes VR. This is great. You know, it fits her head. She's a little girl. She's not nauseous. And her parents pulled us aside and they said, you know, you guys see it from one way, but what we want you to see is that she's never this active in this position. So she, her intensity is up, her pain is down, she's not complaining about the pain. And so we see that from the young age all the way up through people that have Parkinson's and are diagnosed in their 70s and then pain management in their 90s. I had my grandma have a Miron headset. So this is a great case use with Parkinson's. One of the biggest, biggest issues with someone that has Parkinson's is their risk of falling. And anyone in here that's had a grandparent live long enough or a parent, you may know that a fall can be the start of the end with someone. If they break their hip or if they break their shoulder, it's usually pretty downhill from there. And if you can reduce the risk of falling, you can help someone live a better life. And one of the big things is motor planning that's involved with it. How do people make decisions when they don't have full control of their body? So in this experience, he's doing a penalty kick exercise. And so he's doing a lot of motor planning, pattern recognition. But his practitioners have also actually added a soccer ball. So they're adding another stimulus to it. And the practitioners always say the more ways that we can get the brain involved in rehab, the better. How can we make it so that rehab is more engaging on a neurological level? Not just playing games with people when they're doing gait training, but also making it so it's something that their brain is processing differently. So reducing fall risk, obviously insurance companies love that because then over time they'll have less payouts for more hospital visits and injuries. And another great thing is the balance and stability that goes with that. So getting into adding more stimuli, here we have a cycling experience where the hand controller is set as an accelerometer, so it keeps up with your pace in real time. And this guy is hooked up to an FES machine, which is functional electrical stimulation. And what it's doing is it's sending an electrical input to his different muscle groups and trying to promote them to move and activate the muscles with the movements that he's doing, whether it's assisted or not. And we have a lot of practitioners tell us that their patients are reporting more sensation in the affected areas when they're pairing FES with Muron. So someone that's been in a wheelchair for 20 years may all of a sudden have more sensation or more electrical uh, feedback in those muscle groups when they're pairing Muron with it. And what is that telling us? It's telling us that their brain is processing the inputs differently. Because if you ask someone that's been in a wheelchair for six months or six years or longer, imagine walking, their brain lights up differently than someone that's able-bodied and can walk. And you'll notice if you, when we leave this room, if you guys go outside, look at how people are walking around because when you walk, you swing your arms and your opposite arm and your opposite leg go together. And when you've been paralyzed, that's just not true. That's one of the first things that your brain disconnects is how to process walking. So you'll see a lot of assisted walking devices. This is gait training where this person's hooked up into a harness. You have one practitioner holding one knee and leg, the other on the other, and someone holding their hips in place. And the goal of it is to be able to move your body forward. So we have forward moving VR experiences of all paces that help retrain the brain into imagining walking a different way. And you'll see without Miron, a lot of people while they're doing this exercise and people are moving their bodies for them or with them, their arms are just dangling at their sides, which tells their practitioners that they're just going through the motions. And there's a lot of benefits to that. You know, you need to bear weight on your bones. If you don't put weight on your bones, they'll disintegrate from underneath you. And the muscles need different types of circulation. So there are a lot of health benefits, whether they're neurologically engaged or not. But 
when you add neuron, all of a sudden, and I can't say this is true for everyone, but it happens quite frequently, is that you'll see that reciprocal arm motion come right back into play. Or someone that is just like stomping their feet down or their ankles twist funny because they can't have control over how their foot placement is, they'll have a more proper foot placement. But when we see those arms swinging, it's telling us that their brain is processing walking differently than what they've been processing it as. So it's one of the most remarkable things is how you can really retrain your brain. And there's a lot of different ways that this happens. So Amanda Boxall, she was one of the CNN heroes of the year this past year. She's a really inspirational woman. She does a lot of her gait training in this exoskeleton. So there's a, ro a backpack behind her. She's hooked into these legs. They robotically move forward for her, and these arm crutches give her balance and stability. So in her mind, and this is true, she's getting a lot of the benefits of walking, moving her joints and bones and weight bearing, and doesn't really use the other systems that we sometimes see. However, when she did use the other systems, she was having a miserable time. They had her hooked into one of the harnesses and the full length mirrors in front of her so that you can see how your body is moving. And she was extremely frustrated. She thought that the harness pulled on her weird and it looked like she was wearing a diaper and she didn't like it. And also when she's trying to get that reciprocal arm motion, she's getting really frustrated because in the mirror she's like, okay, left foot forward, right foot. And it was very robotic and she was getting frustrated that she wasn't able to match them at the same time. And then she tried Neuron. And I'll let you watch this one minute video of her reaction. This is her first time trying it. wait to put the headset back on when it's starting again. And I love, I love her and I love that video because she's, she feels like she's actually walking. She's been in the wheelchair for 26 years. So just to recap, when you're doing traditional therapy, the practices may be boring and monotonous and you know, especially when you're dealing with pediatrics, you're trying to distract kids and trick them into participating. But what if you can trick someone into participating more than they even know when you have a powerful technology like VR behind it? So our whole library of all, all levels of mobility included, head and neck exercises, core and trunk, lower body, gait training, mental wellness, pain management, is all for practitioners to be able to use and customize how they want. So you'll see a lot of different conditions benefiting from it, and the people that use it, it fundamentally changes their everyday life. If you have more mobility, you have more independence. And if you have more independence, you have a better quality of life. And all of these things are related to the increasing the neuroplasticity, managing your pain, and also improving your mental wellness. People live happier lives when they're more independent. One example that I didn't have in here is that we had this 17-year-old that became a quadriplegic in a bicycle accident. And he was severely depressed because anyone would be at the peak of thinking that you're an adult and you're independent, all of a sudden everything was stripped away from him. And he was not coming to rehab as much as he was originally because everyone around him in his mind was progressing faster than he was or having more gains and he thought he'd be farther along than he was and he wasn't. And when his practitioners introduced Miron, he started extending himself harder than he was before. He told us, when I would activate my pectoral muscles, which are really hard to activate, then I'd say, okay, I felt the burn, I'm done. I got them, they're activated, I got a workout. When he's using Miron, he wants to accomplish that given task. So he's going, even if it's just for three minutes longer in that experience, he's going for longer. And then he's competing against other people. He wants to beat his old score. He wants to beat the next guy's score. So it really, really, really made a tremendous difference for him. So this is at one of the facilities in LA that we visit all the time because it's near us. 
And he was, when we went in, my co-founder and I, he was like, I couldn't wait to see you guys. Guess what? I can put a shirt on again for myself. And that changed his entire life, what he thinks is possible. Another guy that had a stroke came into that facility and was really angry. He was, came in angry. We're like, oh, he's having a bad day. And he's like, I'm not going to be able to drive anymore because I can't turn my arm to turn the steering wheel. How am I going to get groceries? How am I going to get to my appointments? How am I going to do anything? And he was against trying Mirong because he doesn't like video games. He's an older gentleman. And we made him try it. And when he tried it, he was like, well, fine. I'm not going to be able to do it because I can't lift my arm above here. And meanwhile, when he's in our balloon pop exercise, he's popping balloons overhead the entire time. The entire time. No hesitation. So we showed him the video afterwards. And at first, he's like, man, I'm really sore back here. Why do I feel sore? What did I do? What did this do to me? And his practitioners are like, you used muscles that you haven't used in six months. That's why you're sore. And he's like, no, that's impossible. I couldn't have. I couldn't have done that. And we showed him the video, and he was crying. He's like, I can move my body that way? I can do that? So it really got rid of his self-imposed limitations, which is another gigantic element. If you're telling yourself that you can't do something, well, when you see your body in physical space, your brain's going to stop you from doing it because you believe that you cannot do it. But if you're able to take away those elements, you can far exceed what you think is possible and really achieve more. Miron Rehab Pro is our product that's available for healthcare providers. It's been internationally adopted in uh, major hospitals, inpatient and outpatient rehab centers, and also private practice. And since so many people only have eight weeks of insurance covered rehab, they've been asking us, what can we do after this? Can I have Miron at home? So we just released a home product called Miron Go that people can use in their own homes. And people are loving it. So people tell them we have a two-time Paralympic medalist that's been, he's in his 40s and he's been in a wheelchair since he was 16. And he's using Miron because he thinks that he can actually improve where he's at today based upon where he was even a year ago. So he's using it to get more engaged in his occupational therapy. Um, we have a 21-year-old that pushes his body farther than he thinks that he can. Now he knows he can do more than he thought he could. Um, this is an encephalomitis patient, which is a degenerative disease. And it's made, Miron has made rehab fun for that person. And also someone that has a stroke, which is not your typical gamer, not your typical age group. It's helping them maintain their independence, which is so important in life. Our team is an amazing group, Josh, me, and Mike Jones, who's the ex-CEO of MySpace, and he runs one of the largest incubators in Santa Monica called Science. We're always really excited about collaborations and different things that we work on together. And I know that I'm probably out of time, so I'd love to take questions from you guys. If we have to move out into the hall, that's OK. But I also really encourage you to check out our Instagram, at MiranBR. You can see real people using Miron, different case uses, different age groups, how they're using it as new ways to play for children that have uh, different diseases or conditions where they can't learn like typical children do, and mobility and independence. You know, it's one of the things that VR is so on the cusp, and we're hearing about all these ways that it's helping people. And if you can help people live more independent lives and more mobility and less pain, that's the best thing that I think you can do. So, <coughs> excuse me. So check us out. Thank you for coming today. And if anyone has any questions, I'd be pleased to answer. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. That was such important work.